Okay, let's talk about graphing polynomials, but we're going to use transformations to help graph, okay? And really, we probably won't ever go above x cubed for this, so really I should say graphing cubic functions up here instead of polynomials, because that's really the only one we'll go to. You're, you'll never be asked in Algebra 2 to go higher than an x cubed graph, okay? So basically, you'll see here that the only one highlighted here, I'm going to graph y equals x cubed, and we have that s curve shape that shows up, and it looks like this, okay? And if I wanted to graph that accurately, I would go and I would use the table. And that's going to help me find some points that are nice and neat. So negative 2, negative 8 would be a point. Negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 8 are all points that are going to be on the graph. There's my, there's my curve, okay? The very center of this, you know, like when we did parabolas, we had that vertex. Okay, on a parabola, and this we said this was the important point. If you can find the vertex, how it's been slid left or right, up or down, whether things been flipped upside down, whether the graph is stretched, if you can find this, then that's 99% of the battle. Well, the same thing happens here with the S curve. It's the zero, zero point. It's the very middle of the S curve. So we have something that looks like this, but really the most important point is that one right in the middle of the S curve. It's this guy, zero, zero. So we're going to slide this thing around. We're going to use transformations, and it's going to be the same rules that applied to parabolas earlier. For instance, see this? That's an x cubed, but I've added 2 off to the end. You know what that does? That moves it up 2, just like it did with parabolas when we did x squared plus 2. And so all I have to do then is I move everything up 2 spots. Instead of 1, 1, here's my starting point, right? There's the middle of my s curve. This, instead of 1, 1, is now going to be at 1, 3. It moves up 2 points. In other words, I went over 1, up 1 over 2, up 8. Over 1, up 1. Over 2, up 8. Over here, I go over 1, down 1. Over 2, down 8. Which would be right here. Oh, sorry, right here. And negative 6, okay? Now, that's great. Remember that you can always do this, x cubed plus 2, and go to the table. And you always have the plotting points. Negative 2, negative 6. There you go. That's it, right? So the transformations are great, and I'm going to walk you through them. And really all I want you to understand is that the same transformations take place here as they do with parabolas. If you got that, then you can probably figure out, like, you know what that's going to do? That's going to move it four spots. Which direction? Down. Down four spots, okay? Over here, this is going to move it two units, just like it did with parabolas. Which direction is it going to move it? It's going to move it to the right. It's going to move it right to. And so I can go through and I can say, you know what, instead of being at 0, 0, it's going to be over here. I can expect the graph to show up over here. And then as far as the plotting points otherwise, you guys will pick up on that. Okay? And I'm, I'm, I want you to use the, uh, the table feature more than anything else. Okay? Now, if you're going on to college algebra to pre-calculus, this would be a good skill to know okay, that you need to go over 1, 1 and 2, 8. If you're really smart, you'll understand that if I cube the two, I'm eight spots. So that's why we're going up eight spots. Okay. Um, this is left one. This is here. What happened whenever we did this with parabolas? We put a negative out in front. It flips it upside down. In fact, we did that with the in behavior just a minute ago, right? What happens when I make a negative leading coefficient? It flips it upside down, right? So instead of going up and to the right, it's going to go down as it goes to the right. I didn't move it at all. The center is still at 0, 0. But now I go over 1, down 1, over 2, down 8. Over 1, up 1, over 2, up 8. Okay, so my graph looks like this. This, remember, we say it reflects across the x-axis. That's our fancy terminology for saying flips upside down. And so then one more, okay, just to round things out, let's put them all together. The 4 here moves it up 4. The 3 here moves it left 3. And the negative sign out in the front flips it upside down, which we say reflects across the x-axis. And so it would be very simple for me to just to say, you know what? I need to go left 3, and I need to go up 4. There's my center point. That's the equivalent of my zero, the middle of my S-curve that I had earlier. And instead of going upward, I'm going to go downward. So over 1, down 1. Over 2, down 8. Over 1, up 1. Over 2, up 8. And I can see the S-curve starting to form. It's going to look something like this. Okay. But once again, guys, seriously, this calculator is so nice. If I go through 
and I say I want a negative x cubed plus 3 plus 4. Okay, let's just delete that one. Whoops. Yep, that's it. X, nope, sorry. I typed that in wrong. Be careful. X plus 3, that gets cubed. And then afterward, we add the 4, right? X plus 3 cubed plus 4. There it is. And I'm going to use the table. And I want you guys just to learn how to use the table and go graph it. There's all the points that I have graphed. You don't need to memorize how to do this all by hand. But you do need to be able to recognize that that moves at left 3. And this moves it up 4 and that flips it upside down. It reflects it across the x-axis. If you can do that, you're going to be good, especially if you can do that in combination with being able to use the table accurately and graphing it and saying, oh, looky there. Looks like it looks like I got it correct, didn't I? Right? So there you go. Um, you should be ready to do the homework now about graphing polynomials.